Sylvester 19, the range, so that means um, the inverse, it's the range of the inverse. Now the domain of your original function goes to the range of the original function, okay? So the domain goes to the range for f of x, or g of x in this question, but it is also acts as the range for the inverse function. So the inverse function comes back and its range would be the same as what you used in the first place. So the domain is going to be x. The domain of x was bigger and equal to minus 3. So when we come back again, the range for the inverse is bigger and um, equal to minus 3. But when we come back, we're using our output. So um, it's y that needs to be bigger and equal to minus 3. Okay. Uh, inverse function. Um, we've got a quadratic here. To do an inverse function for a quadratic, you need to complete the square. So completing the square, we are halving the digit in front of the 6, which is a 3. Goes in the bracket as a squared. That would, if I squared that bracket, give me a plus 9 on the end. You see, we haven't got anything on the end, so I take away the 9 to make the 0 on the end. So we've got a completed the square version here. By changing the... Uh, by um, finding the inverse, we need to change the subject. So I'm trying to get the x by itself. To do that, I need to get rid of the square root, uh, square by square rooting both sides. Then I take away the 3 from both sides. This is my uh, change of subject. It's now x equals. But when you give the um, inverse function, remember that you replace the y's in your inverse with x's. So final answer, square root of x plus 9 minus 3.